there, winos. This is Vince. Wine is Papillon still interesting in 2021? Let's pop the cork on this bad boy and find out on today's Wine Lab. Thanks for joining me. And before we get started today, if you want to be a winoceros, hit subscribe on this channel to become a wino today. I'll put out new videos every single Saturday. So be sure to hit that bell icon to stay notified for more great wine content. Okay, so this is the 2018 Papillon, and this wine has been pretty famous for some time now. I'm sure you recognize this really cool label with the hands and the Papillon tattooed on the knuckles. So this is one of those David Finney wines. It's an Orange Swift wine, and I like to keep it about the wine here at Vince.Wine. Wine, but this is the second David Finney wine that I'm reviewing, the first being The Prisoner. And David Finney uh, released another Zinfandel blend that I definitely want to pop the cork on. And I'll talk a little bit more about who David Finney is if you're not familiar and what his story is, because it has a lot to do with that wine. But for today, we're just gonna take this for what it is. So Papillon is what we call a Bordeaux style blend or a Meritage blend. And it is Meritage, not Meritage. Sometimes we like to Frenchify that word and call it Meritage, but it's Meritage based on California winemakers heritage. So it's that Bordeaux style blend, which means it's gonna be Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Petit Verdot, and Malbec. And Napa, of course, is famous the world over for their Cabernet Sauvignons and Bordeaux varietals, with Papillon being a prime example of Napa excellence. Or supposedly, I, I haven't actually tasted it yet. This is a $70 bottle of wine. And so if you buy it in a restaurant, they probably gonna mark that up times two. So it's a little pricey for sort of just your everyday table wine, but certainly it's great for occasion or otherwise you want to try to look for the best price that you can find and let's find out if it's even worth it oh by the way the story behind the art here david finney had already had this idea of having these tattooed knuckles all of the orange swift wines are really really unique and iconic labels this being no exception so the winemaker wanted these sort of tattooed knuckles didn't know what he wanted it to say and and then had the idea of these sort of sort of dirty hands that looked like they've been in that vineyard working in that soil working working in that terroir. But David Finney actually was listening to a, a young girl in France pointing out a butterfly and realized, oh my gosh, Papillon, that is the perfect name for this wine. And, and I imagine it went a bit like this. <laughs> That's probably exactly how that went. Okay, well, without further ado, let's find out if this Napa Bordeaux varietal blend is more than just a label. I do want to say, by the way, that um, the glass here is really, really heavy. Uh, this is a really nice tapered bottle, and it just looks so big, but it is 750 milliliters. It's just super weighty and heavy. Nice glass, and it does make it feel like a pretty premium product. Okay, in the glass here, yeah, it does look like a really beautiful sort of violet color here. So I can see on the rim, it's slight ruby red there, but it just deepens into this pretty concentrated color. And I can't tell, but it looks a touch cloudy. So I'm not sure if they completely filter this here. And as I turn the glass, I am getting some staining on there that tells me a little bit about the body of this wine. Super strong tears or legs there that speak to that viscosity and intensity of the wine. <sighs> okay. Okay, I want to start here. This is definitely a serious wine. It's not giving me like a face full of jammy fruit. It's not giving me like a face full of oak or anything like that. This is starting right away with almost a dried condition of fruit and a lot of sort of like earthy components in there. I'm getting like gravelly, sort of like this dry, dusty gravel on there. It is though super young. This is a 2018, so the condition of the fruit is just slightly jammy, but it's more like fresh and ripe fruit. Uh, all blackberries, a little bit of that anise in there. Slightly plummy as well and, and the oak treatment on here I'm not getting like vanilla I'm not getting uh, you know like those toasty elements from oak it's more playing off like woodsy it's kind of like a cedar a sandalwood that kind of thing maybe a hint of like cigar box in there as well and not not all the way to leather or smoke but something pretty close to that and while it's certainly complex um, I'm a little surprised that this isn't exactly like screaming out of the glass here. The nose is not like very, very loud. I'll volatize the esters or swirl and open up those aromatics just to try to see what else I can pull from there. <sighs> yeah, it is, it is quite nice. Um, let's just go ahead and get it on the palate. That's really good. <laughs> That's really nice. This wine just threw me out of character. 
Okay, here's where I'm at with this wine. So, it is good. But more than that, I think that if you're a fan of this channel, you know, I review like uh, maybe some like mid tier to low tier bottom shelf level wines. And every now and then I, I get a kind of a nice one in there too. Surprisingly, a lot of them are owned by Gallo. It's pretty much impossible to walk into any wine shop and not find a producer owned by Gallo. And actually this is also one of them, but that just tells you that there's such a range, right? Like they own Apothic uh, and they own Papillon. So that just describes how vast their arsenal is. So having said that, this is is the best put together wine I have tasted in a long time. Structurally, this thing is just balanced. It is just so well crafted. I mean, there is so much thought that goes into the mouthfeel. And the number one thing that I think I love about this wine is mouthfeel. My goodness, from start to finish, this is an experience. It's like silk entering onto the palate and I can keep it on there all day. It's just smooth and soft and supple and luscious. Man, this is such a delight to have on the palate. Then as you finish it, oh yeah, there's just the savoriness to it. It hits me in all the right places on the palate as well. And that finish goes forever. It just keeps on going even now. I'm left with some really beautiful fruitiness and again a kiss of that dryness from, from oak and actually kind of still that gravel flavor in there too. Really, really beautiful complexity. Now having said all of that, um, I pretty much have to say this wine is about the structure. It is all about those things I just said, the mouthfeel. That's what this is all about. I have to say I'm not like going nuts over the flavor profile. It's a little rustic even though it's youthful. Um, and and besides that, yeah, I, I, it's just not bringing me like these flavors that are making me go, oh, the depth, the richness. I think I could have used even more complexity, maybe. Um, different earth, newer oak. I, I'm not, maybe a different blend of varietals, throwing some other things in there. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It seems slightly straightforward to me. And uh, for as complex it is, as it is, yeah, it's a little straightforward. There's no denying that this is a phenomenal effort by very skilled winemakers. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wine on the palate. That mouthfeel, gosh, it's, it's worth it just for that. But yeah, I could have seen a little bit more in flavor, I think. You know what? I think this is a $60 wine, maybe $65. I'd be happy with it. I think I spent too much today with $70. And by the way, Winos, I am not going to do that again. Um, I think it's uh, time to start a Patreon. And if you Winos want to see me review really, really high-end wines, then uh, you can help donate to it so that I can afford them. Yeah, I, I would say $60, $65. Uh, certainly not a $100 wine. I I'm not sure what all the raving is about without becoming redundant. Yeah, that mouthfeel, the craftsmanship, beautiful. But for that price, I would have wanted to have a much grander experience as far as the flavor profile as well. Ooh, okay, I really just wanted to finally give this wine a review. I know it's super popular. So the question is, is Papillon still interesting in 2021? I'd have to say sure. Uh, you know, it's definitely an example of fantastic winemaking. I guess if someone is like serving it to you or they ordered it at the restaurant or they poured it at their house, um, then certainly it's nothing to turn your nose up. But for the price, I probably won't buy this one again, but certainly there are some other great orange Swift wines out there. And there's one that I'm really excited to try. So that'll be coming in a future episode. Keep your eyes out for it. Okay, let's see how much you want to kill me in the comments for my, I guess, not so great review of, of Papillon. But let me know, what do you want to think? Do you love this wine? What do you love about it? What other Orange Swift and David Finney wines are out there that you like? What other Gallo wines are out there that you like? There's thousands of them, literally. Let me know in the comments. And until next time, winos, drink safe and drink well. Wait, that was too much. <laughs>